Hello everybody and happy Friday. It's another week done of Make Your Monday week two of 2021. And this week we worked with Operation Fistula for another Viz5 challenge where you helped us visualize gender equality or actually equality as may be the fact this week. We looked at the topic of HIV infections and AIDS related death and how women and young women in particular are disproportionately affected. First up, I want to say a huge thank you for all the effort you've put in this week, for the visualizations you created, the data stories you created and shared, because I know it helps not just Operation Fistula bring more awareness to this topic, but also the organization they work with this week, which is Mothers to Mothers. It really helps them highlight their cause. So thank you for all the work that you've done. Now, there are always some lessons learned, so let me start with well, the lessons learned before we move on to the favorites for this week. My first lesson is around color. And those of you who watched this review probably heard me uh, say a few words about the choice of pink and blue. And to me, color is just something really important, especially when it's a topic that's emotional, that's actually quite difficult to probably visualize, but also to communicate. And something that's actually really bad and negative. So pink and blue, in my opinion, you may disagree, but pink and blue have nothing to do with HIV and AIDS, even if it is about boys and girls or adolescents, women and men. To me, pink and blue, the only time it's acceptable, it's not really, but the only time I probably won't complain is if we're talking about a baby shower or some sort of gender reveal party, right? Um, in this context, it just looks out of place. And the statement I made in this review is that if you want to get into the favorites, you're not going to make it if it's lit pink and blue. It's just so inappropriate. So I want to make sure that, yes, please experiment, test all the different things out. But there are certain um, hurdles <laughs> of best practices that I want people to apply. And color is a really big one. I have another point on color, and that's my second lesson. And that's around backgrounds. I know that people like experimenting with dark backgrounds. And sometimes they can work really well but you have to be extremely careful what color you use in the foreground to have enough of a contrast. It has to be really easily legible and just something that pops and then makes it easy to understand. If you have a dark background, a black one, maybe dark blue or dark gray, and you have something that doesn't have a good contrast, it's really straining on the eyes to read through it, to look at the data. And for me, it's an immediate turn off if I have to make a huge effort just to comprehend what's going on. So, um, so what I recommend is to really consider, do you need a dark background? Uh, if so, what color will provide you with the biggest contrast? And the biggest one is white. So white font is probably quite good. But if you choose something like blue or red, pick a shade that doesn't strain the eyes. Pick a shade that when you step a few feet away, you're like, oh yeah, that still looks good. So be really self-critical because otherwise I have to be. And I'd rather you make that assessment yourself first. I also saw a few visits this week that had, you know, a really bright yellow or bright red background. And those are just, I can't look at them for very long. So it's really hard for me to engage with a visualization that is so difficult to, you know, keep my eyes on because they're hurting. So be very mindful of how your vis is perceived based on color. Another lesson is around messaging and the vis five topics they're not easy and they're not meant to be easy. These are difficult topics that are challenges faced by women and girls around the world. And if it was trivial, it would be much easier to build this awareness, right? So what I want you to consider is how can you make the right choices when it comes to words, especially if your second language is English and my second language is English. So I feel your pain, but I have had the benefit of working and living, living in English for many, many years, so it has become easier. But if you're not sure how to describe something, maybe it's a metric or a finding, have a look in the documentation that we provide in, on data.world with each data set and see how they worded it. Because especially for these of us five data sets, the team at Operation Fistula make a lot of effort to put together a very comprehensive article that explains the topic to you and that has a bit of wording that you can reuse. Now, you can of course paraphrase it, but there might be some terms in there that really 
hit the spot and uh, that make it easier for you to communicate what you're trying to say. And lastly, and this is always the case, and I'll put my hand up, I just forgot it this week, it's been a bit full on, uh, but always include a call to action with these VIS 5 topics. There's always an opportunity to get people to take action such as finding out more so that they learn more about a topic, but also, probably most importantly, to make a donation or support in some other way. The best way to do that is to have a really prominent button. So for example, if you have a white background, you have a nice big black or purple button, depending on the colors you choose, but something with strong contrast that makes people want to take action. Write a big fat donate on it and link this not just to someone's website, but directly to the page where they can make a donation. Essentially, we can all be a bit lazy, and I'm saying this in the nicest way. I'm not saying it to criti uh, criticize anyone, but we can all be a bit lazy. So the easier you make it for someone to take action, the more likely they are to actually do that. So link your donations button or whatever call to action you include directly to the place where people can actually take action. So those are my lessons for this week. I hope you found them helpful, and I'd love to hear whether you found them helpful. So post a comment below the video. And now let's move on to this week's favorites. So first one on my list is Chantanil, and he has created another Excel viz, which I think is really cool. The picture is a little bit cut off on the left, but you know where this is heading. And uh, what I really like is, aside from it being really impressive that he created this in Excel, there's the consistency in colors going left to right. So first we have an overview in blue. Then we have this focus on adolescent girls or, you know, uh, in, in red, or this kind of just off red. And then on the right side, it talks about mothers to mothers, the impact you can have and a nice big donate button. I think this is really well done. It's uh, quite clean and simple uh, in terms of the visualization. And there is a call to action so people can actually do something. So well done, Chantanel. Next up, we have Kevin Wee, and we saw quite a few of these tile maps of Africa this week that had small multiples in them uh, in some shape or form. And what I really like here is the interactivity. So I'm just going to jump between the pictures to make that simple enough. So here is a parameter and um, you can change between the raw numbers and the gender ratio. And I really like how it stands out what we read in the article that specifically in southern countries of Africa and the east, uh, yeah, eastern African countries, there are a lot more cases. And I think Kevin has brought that to life. I think there's a nice balance of viz versus text and the text is nicely split up. I'm a real big fan of having small segments of text. So a paragraph here, a paragraph there, you know, a sentence there, a title, a little annotation. It breaks it up. It makes it much, much easier for me as a reader to digest this information. Next up, we have Danelle, and I admit this is a little bit small, so let's just work with it. What I really like is this is a super clean overview viz where I'm, get, um, I'm taken through the story, effects of HIV on adolescents, the gender inequality and its impact on adolescent girls, and then how you can help. So there's three really clear parts. It's nice and simple, and I really like the approach that he's taken. And then we have Owen Barnes, and I love that he managed to find a way to make this a simple bar chart and to give me some flexibility on what metrics I want to compare uh, the countries on. Now, one thing I would probably change is this, uh, this difference line because, you know, the story is about females suffering and this is highlighted with the red bars, but then the percentage highlights how much fewer males. So it kind of takes the shift, shifts the focus away a bit from the females, but I love the overall design. I think it's nice and simple. Um, and I think this is just really well done in terms of just you know focusing on a specific story in the data. And then we have Kimberly Fidel, and I don't think I've come across this name. So Kimberly, welcome to Make Your Monday. I do believe that you were probably around last week. Uh, great that you tuned into this review as well and had some help in the chat. And what I love is the angle that Kimberly has taken. Stolen futures. It gives me goosebumps just reading that. And I think the black color on this kind of just off white, off yellow background really hits home on you know, how, how many lives are taken away 
and she says it, it's over a million since 1990 due to HIV. Um, I think this is a great approach and it certainly, you know, triggered some emotions in me. So well done, Kimberly. And then we have Tom Prowse. And <clears throat> this one here is a connected scatter plot. And I'm a huge fan of these visualizations, but they don't always work. In this case, it does work. So Tom compares the HIV infections per 1,000 people, that's on the x-axis, and the AIDS deaths per 100,000 on the y-axis. And what you see is, on the one hand, that you know there's some sort of like jolt where there's been an increase over time and then a decrease again. So when it goes right and then back to the left, he calls it out um, in the top, oh, where was it, somewhere... Um, oh, here we go. The third paragraph. As you can see, many countries have turned the corner from the peak in the early 2010s and deaths are trending downwards. So that's a good thing. Where we see the gender disparities, and this is super cool, the, the underlining of the title makes that clear, is that women are more on the right side, so higher number of HIV infections and sometimes also higher vertically in terms of the number of deaths. So that shows the gender disparity and I think he did that really well. And it's also looking really clean. And I like how he included the how to read uh, in the top right corner, just to make sure that everyone understands. And then we have Liz Bravo. And I'm actually going to jump to her PDF. Um, Liz is almost a, a, a given to feature in the favorites because her work is so consistently good. She has created, you know, um, a couple of pages. The first one giving the introduction, setting the scene with these um, circle or kind of, they always look like Cheerios and I don't want to really say that because it's not quite with the topic, but the shape is these kind of donuts. And this is for the year 2019. And then below, um, her viz focuses on the you know, the, the different countries. And then you see on in the left panel for each country are uh, the female lives impacted by HIV and the male lives impacted by HIV. And yes, this is a viz that will take a little bit of time to understand and dissect until you can make truly make sense of it. But Liz's approach is truly about design and about data art. And I think there is a place for that. It's not necessarily something you would put in front of your CEO and say, hey, this is where we need to make changes because it takes a bit longer to understand. But for these first five campaigns where we are focusing about, uh, we're focusing on building awareness for these topics and giving organizations alternative visualizations and stories to work with, I think this has a really good place. And I applaud Liz for putting in the time and effort to actually create this visualization. And then, yeah, we have quite a few favorites this week. Uh, the next one comes from Yobani Samano. I know he has participated in the past. I have to admit, I cannot actually read the text, um, but <laughs> uh, the, the visit looks great. And what I can make out from it is that, you know, we're looking at the mortality associated with HIV between 1990 and 2019, and then we also have the death per 100,000 inhabitants. And what I really like is how he's used the other. Um, oh, now I need to now I need to think because I believe he's used uh, the other years. So 2019 is probably red, um, and then the other years are in grey. Essentially, what I'm trying to say here is it's nice to see that highlighted line in red. Um, stand out and it really gives you an, an, an idea of what's going on here. So well done. And then we have Brandon Cornell and what I really liked in his viz where we have a bar chart and a few line charts in the small map um, and the map being a filter as well is that he really focused on the story of mothers to mothers. So it's not just about the data but it's also about this NGO that is helping mothers in Africa and is trying to change the story. So uh, yeah, I really like that and that's why I wanted to highlight it. And he has put his call to action, support Mothers to Mothers mission, really nice and, and early in the piece, which is also helpful just to draw people's attention. So that brings us to the end of this video of favorites and the weekly recap. I really hope you enjoyed the lessons learned and I hope that you either found yourself in the favorites or found some inspiration in the work the others created. 
I think this week was a great effort by everyone. I think we can all continue to learn and I am encouraged that we have so many new people who've joined the community and have put in their work to make a contribution. Tune it back in on Sunday. Now, that is not a video, that's just on Twitter when Andy's going to publish the next data set, the data for week three. And with me for this review on Wednesday next week will be Michelle Freeman again, because she's back for the rest of January. So with that, I wish you a good rest of your Friday, an enjoyable, relaxing weekend. Stay safe, stay home, wear your mask, and I look forward to seeing everyone's work next week. Bye bye.